Oh boy, we're back with another Death Dire. Today is number 84. Now, before we dive into the uh, update for today, which is Chop Back Feature Roundup number two, uh, yes, I am aware that there are several YouTubers out there right now with um, synthetic Dawn videos. Sadly, uh, these were all shot at Gamescom. I initially had a uh, meeting scheduled with Paradox. However, uh, considering I was working Par uh, Gamescom myself as well, uh, and uh, my attention were sadly driven somewhere else when this meeting was uh, originally scheduled due, due to my project requiring more time than anticipated, I was sadly not able to sit down with Daniel and um, basically go over the features of Synthetic Dawn. So if you want to have a general overview of what's going on with that, go over towards Quill 18's channel. He's got uh, the video up. It's like 50 minutes long. It's a long-ass video going through all the features with proper footage from Synthetic Dawn. It's um, very informative, so go free to feel free to check that out. In the meantime, though, Def Diary 84, the Chop Back Feature Roundup Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about some of the features that uh, have not been talked about at all in the development cycle of the game, and some of these are actually quite cool. First of all, we're going to be talking about land appropriation. We are going to go a full, full trail of tears on this one because there is a new policy called land appropriation, which will basically be available to all ethics and government forums and whether or not uh, a newly conquered planet should have land appropriated from the locals. Now, this will only be valid to a species that uh, has... Uh, less than five tiles on the planet available. So if there's less than five free tiles on the planet and you have land appropriation enabled, these um, locals, also filthy xeno scum, will be um, thrown away from their territory, uh, or at least your new territory, because obviously we cannot have them sitting around there just, you know, filling up l valuable space. Now, how these uh, additional po uh, pops will be dealt with, either they will generate refugees and go somewhere else, or they will be uh, generally be removed from the game. They will not be purged, but I'm sure there's going to be a negative modifier to any sort of xenophile species out there, which is rather annoying. Also, the land appropriated modifier is going to increase the migration attraction to that planet and prevents non-citizen species from reproducing and migrating while uh, they are whilst in effect. So uh, the land appropriation cycle will take probably around 1900 days in the picture right here I've got is 1822 so that's probably on a countdown. But all your core species will be able to move in there that are citizens. Interesting stuff. Um, Probably a bit of an outlier situation if you really want your pops to move in if they are far superior obviously uh, right now we're working at like a number approach rather than looking at them as sentient beings within a real world so yeah it becomes a little bit awkward once you start looking at like I don't know genocide levels of displacement which is highly unfortunate to say the least uh, pre-sapient policies we're gonna have some new pre-sapient policies Polony, uh, policies, pre-sentience, uh, pre those that do not know, are uh, relatively rare pops that sometimes spawn on planets and you can uplift them into new um, new species. Uh, they will be uh, changed in 1.8 and also massively expanded. The following policies, policies are now available for your choosing on how to actually deal with it. Uh, before, you could tolerate them. Uh, that, that was fine. You could protect them which is also fine. You can turn them into livestock. A livestock basically makes sure that you can eat them and add them to your general food pool. Uh, a video for uh, how food actually works very soon as well. And uh, slowly but steadily they will be depleted. So it's not like you can farm them. They'll literally be uh, livestock. And in terms of livestock, it's more of a hunter-prey relationship rather than a farmer to livestock uh, sort of relationship there. And then there is extermination, which is basically the classic um, purge them all uh, upper, uh, yeah, thing there. Uh, new initial border status. This is something I've been wanting for quite some while. Uh, once you generate new contact or get in contact with a new species, in the past you would need it, you needed to manually enable open and close borders. Now there will be an additional item to the first contact rule, whether or not it's going to be uh, nice or aggressive. We're also going to have initial border status, so whether or not you can 
Uh, you can choose whether or not your borders are going to be opened or closed, depending on what your policy is. So if you're a xenophobe and you don't like those alien scum going inside your territory with their ships, you can close the borders to them immediately. Obviously, this is not going to be the case if you haven't um, done first contact, uh, contact yet. Uh, so, yeah, you'll basically need to speak to them first before this becomes uh, a thing. Then there's robotic workers, very similarly to the uh, policy when it comes to allowing uh, artificial intelligence. The robotic workers, they can be outlawed or uh, allowed. If you turn them uh, to outlawed, all robotic workers will be automatically disassembled. And this is basically a thing to repress the oncoming... Uh, yeah machine empire basically so that's kind of important uh manual purging and it's back manual purging was removed i believe in 1.6 in the banks update or even earlier uh yeah i don't know 1.6 was banks so yeah we are uh, we're looking to get purging back again now previously you could only purge everything on the planet but before 1.6 purge, purging individual pops was also possible. This will only be available for slaves and non-protected pre-sentience uh, uh, robotic pops without citizen rights. And that's pretty much it. The rules to which pops can be purged and assembled are fully moddable. So you can mod your preferred type of genocide. Who does not like that? That's not bad for a game that's, uh, by the way, age 7 and up. It's... It's kind of like Crusader Kings. There is incest, but it's all about the implication. That's why I like the uh, Paradox games, because it's all simple systems, but and they seem to be particularly benign when looking at them objectively. But then, once they start working in tandem with each other, you get all sorts of horrific situations, which, you know, again, it's all about the implication. That will be wrapping up today's Death Diary number 84. Today, uh, that's going to be pretty interesting. Next week, we're going to be uh, continuing the feature roundup, so that will be number three. We're going to be talking about changing to Ascension Paths. That's a really big deal. Ascension Paths are only available to Utopia players. Mega Structures are also going to be changed. That's also for Utopia players. And Awaken empire decadence that's also for utopia players so utopia is definitely still being tweaked quite a lot and patched here and there and some features being added so utopia in itself is actually becoming a more attractive product for people to get but they got they're gonna add decadence and for those that have played crusader kings 2 and have played around with some of the islam um counties dukes etc or empires in general that should ring all sorts of bells and raise all sorts of red flags because the decadence system wasn't particularly well out well thought out during sword of islam but we will see how um, wiz and the team is going to execute in 1.8 chopek as well as the upcoming updates to utopia and in addition synthetic dawn we will see thank you so much for watching and in the meantime um I'm currently running a new series. It is about the Borg from the Star Trek New Horizons mod. I, I highly suggest you go check it out. It's very cool stuff. One of the best mods in the game by a long shot, both in from a visual point of view as well as a story point of view. The team is incredibly um, hardworking on that and... Go check it out, and we have one more item for today, and I quickly need to check it out. That's the Solaris Movie Competition. The vote ends tomorrow on September the 1st. The vote has been extended. There will be a link down below in the description that will take a look at that. I'm sadly not one of the people that got into the competition, but there is a bunch of people that have gotten votes out there. Right now, there's only a couple hundred votes, so head over towards the Paradox Forums by clicking on the link in the description. Make an account and vote for your favorite video. Go and have a look at all of them they are all quite good but in the end i can only tell you to go there and go check it out and have some have some good times watching some of these videos i can't really tell anybody to go vote for a specific person because there is forty-eight thousand of you and that would be highly unfair to some of the people because the highest amount of votes is 134 so let's try to boost that a little bit and um yeah let's try to get a little bit more um, activity going on on this competition because the more people are active on it the more uh, the more often paradox will do it and the bigger chance that uh, I myself may actually get involved at some point but yeah good times thank you so much for watching and until next time take good care of yourselves and as always each other but not others though no really <laughs>